Hi folks, welcome back to Psychology Works. This is Dr. Scott Greenaway. I would like to focus on a strategy, a treatment. I'm talking specifically about how to apply mindfulness to anxiety issues. If you're perfectionistic or you're always worrying about what's gonna happen or uh, that goes along with perfectionism, trying to control things, feeling like everything has to be just a certain way to be happy and then you end up defeating the purpose because you've spent all this time trying to make things be a certain way that it's detracted from the happiness and, and you're not happy. And instead you're anxious, stressed, maybe even irritable. One of the best ways to combat that and beat that is mindful acceptance. So I'd like to do a deep dive. Maybe it's not a total deep dive, maybe a semi deep dive where I would do three short videos helping people use mindful acceptance to help beat and eradicate this anxiety, stress, perfectionism type behavior. So let's start with defining mindfulness in a way where we can take chapters and chapters of books and kind of refine it down to its bare essentials. The way I see it, there are three main parts, three main tenets of mindfulness, and here's what they are. By the way, right before we do that, if you hit like or subscribe, it really helps me out. The channel's growing. I'd love to get more people watching and help as many people as I can. The first aspect of mindfulness is watching, observing, paying attention to, witnessing. These are all synonyms for sort of the same thing. A lot of times when we're anxious, distressed, upset, what we want to do naturally is avoid it or distract ourselves. I'm going to watch TV and distract myself so that I don't have to feel this stress. But with mindfulness, you would do just the opposite. And instead, you would bring your attention to the very thing that's distressing you. The second aspect of mindfulness also goes against our natural reflex. We usually want to try to fix things, change things. I don't know if this is human nature or maybe Western culture or maybe it's worldwide. I don't know. But it does seem like what I've seen is people want to fix things that they don't like. They want to solve things if something's not the way they prefer it. They want to take action and make it be that way. And that's what, in my culture at least, that's what we're ingrained in learning so that you can be a happy person. This may be true to an extent until we start trying to solve and fix and change things that aren't able to be changed. Then we start running into frustration and being upset. So let's suppose you are a person who likes to change and fix and solve things and you're faced with an issue that you can't do that. Let's use mindful acceptance as a way to respond after you've already tried the problem solving or you've come to the conclusion there's no solution for this. To sum all this up, the second aspect of mindfulness is allowing. Allowing the world to unfold the way it naturally wants to without our input. And again, you would use this selectively. You don't want to live your life not intervening or changing or fixing anything. but at certain points, which we'll talk about later, when would you use mindfulness? You will want to use this mental, deliberate, this attitude of allowing without going with our natural urge to try to fix, change, or solve it. Now, the third aspect of mindful acceptance or mindfulness also goes against our natural tendency. Our human nature makes us put things into categories of good and bad or right or wrong. Mindful acceptance would hope that you can give up those labels of good and bad, right and wrong, and just view things as is. Let me give you an example of something that would be easy to do this on. You want to put on a shirt and you have a blue shirt and a red shirt that are pretty similar and you think, well, I could wear the red one or the blue one. They're both colors of shirts, it's fine. I'll just wear either one. It's easy to apply it to something like that. It's way more difficult if you were do, dealing with something like, let's say you had shoulder pain. It's hard to say, well, having pain and not having pain, they're just both conditions of my muscles. They're just both sensations that I'm experiencing. You can see it's harder to do that. It's much more likely that you're going to say, no, pain is bad and wrong and lack of pain is good. We can probably only get so far in this and maybe some people are better than others at doing this. But to view emotions, for example, uh, happiness, sad, anxious, these are all just emotions. If I'm happy, that's what is. If I'm sad, that's equally what is. You know, it'd be harder to do it on something like that. 
So even if you can just get the first two aspects down, the watching and observing combined with the allowing and accepting without the need to change, fix, or solve, I think you're going to be 99% there. And then if you are a guru that practices this for years, then perhaps you'll be able to get to the point where you can give up all sense of critique and good and bad. But I won't even expect that. Here's what I want you to do until the next video. Pay attention to your life as you're going about your daily life and see if there are examples where you feel the desire or the urge or the need to avoid, distract, kind of try not to pay attention to something that's unsettling, troubling, an irritant, what have you, something that's not preferred. And then also notice if you feel this drive to either change, fix, correct it, and that you're labeling it as wrong or bad. And we'll just leave it at that. The next video, we'll take it to the next step and I'll help you understand what we can do about this. So first, we're just trying to be more aware of it. I hope this is helpful as a start to mindfulness or mindful acceptance, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and take it easy.